Hey, moron! Hey, moron! No! Look, look, look at me! I'm the whole water boy, dude! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great uh, Thirsty Thursday. I hope you had a great hump day. I hope you were humping or getting over the hump or doing whatever you do on hump day. For me, yesterday was kind of interesting. I'm working on a house that's about an hour and a half or so away from here. And yesterday, you may have seen where I was talking about the Dallas Cowboys. I always talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Talking about the Cowboys and how they've kind of screwed the pooch, of course. Waiting always costs you more money. That Josh Allen just got a uh, $30 million per year uh, contract, of course, which ends up bumping up the cost for Micah Parsons and things. And we got caught in a traffic jam, which turned out to have been a police chase that was going on. Because it was funny this morning, I was watching the local news because we're supposed to get some really bad weather this morning. A uh, chance of tornadoes, heavy downpours, high winds and stuff like that. And they were actually talking about this incident. Now, what was kind of cool was Basically, the only footage they had was the traffic cameras from a long ways away. I literally went past this thing. If I had been wise, if I had known, I would have probably looked at my cell phone and made sure I got good shots and stuff in there. Because we got the person that they were after um, literally standing on his car. We had automatic rifles and everything out and so on. And so the standoff hap was for an hour long, an hour long. Eventually, the police, I guess, got tired of it. They shot him, non-life-threatening injuries, and he's gone to uh, the Charlottesville Medical Center and so forth. And it turned out he was alleged to have shot somebody in a police chase and sued, and that shit happened all around me. So um, this is where I always tell you, you know, be careful what you do and where you go and everything else because you just don't know what can happen these days. Life is just crazy. So, speaking of crazy, you know, of course, we talk about the Dallas Cowboys here. You know, I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. Always have been, always will be. It's getting kind of interesting because, have you noticed how one day we'll get one side of the spectrum? Like, for example, we were talking about, you know, they, they were talking about trading CeeDee Lamb for two uh second round picks and a third round pick, you know, one day, the next day, they're talking about a $150 million contract. It's like, wait a minute, which is it going to be? You guys just pulling this shit out your ass or what? I, I, you know, it's just crazy. And so when it comes to Dak Prescott, there's all the speculation on whether or not he's going to be a Dallas Cowboy. If he's going to be coming back or if the Cowboys are going to uh, just let him walk, if they're going to re-sign him, you know, we've gone past Trey Lance. Actually, we're coming back to Trey Lance. I forgot we're coming back to Trey Lance. Today, it's Trey Lance. Yesterday, it was Michael Penix. Now, here's what I will say. I don't know how many of you guys remember because you heard Michael uh, Adam Schefter break that the Cowboys could be drafting Michael Penix, that they're interested in a quarterback. See, here's the thing. I got to say this. Now, first of all, nobody is 100% right on football. I don't care who you talk to. The guys that are the journalists, the guys that are the talking heads, Joe the fan in the basement, nobody is 100% right on this stuff. So much is like predicting the weather, okay? And people will come up with their own ideas and things, you know, and say, well, people are talking about, it. or here's a proposed trade. And those are not things that are necessarily coming from the team. The team's not going to go out there and tell you, here's what we're going to do. Not unless you happen to be lucky to kind of get slipped some information by accident. You might overhear some things or something or other. But a lot of this shit is just made up. And let me give you a prime example because a couple of years ago, the day of the draft, which actually could influence the draft on what people are doing. And this is one of those things that I kind of have a problem with ESPN now being involved in gambling. Because they can directly affect how people will gamble by the way they report news. 
But this was Adam Schefter who got called out because the day of the draft, he literally said Aaron Rodgers is going to be traded. On the Rodgers Packers situation. Well, El, just listen to what Brian Gutekunst said there last night. There were a couple of little hints there. We've been working through this for some time. What does that tell you? It's been going on for a while. He also said it may take a while. What does that tell you? It's not solved. The problem is still there. He can say they're not trading Aaron Rodgers and they don't want to trade Aaron Rodgers and they don't have any plans to trade Aaron Rodgers and they haven't gotten a lot of interest from other teams about trading Aaron Rodgers. But the fact of the matter is they have a major issue on their hands that they don't know how to solve, that they've been working on in the words of the general manager for some time and may take quite a while. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in quite a while with Aaron Rodgers, and we don't know how his feelings will or won't change. We know that Aaron Rodgers is a pretty determined individual. We know that he likes to play with a chip on his shoulder. We know he still remembers all the teams that bypassed him in the draft 17, 18 years ago, and he remembers that. I don't think that Aaron Rodgers is just going to get past this that quickly and move on. And the Packers know they have an issue that isn't going away. They're trying to figure out how to address it. So it's very easy to say they're not going to trade him now. No, they're not going to trade him now. But none of us, including Brian Gutekunst, know where this situation is going in the future. Okay, but for, for the sake of fans that maybe know their team needs a quarterback but didn't watch them draft one yesterday in the first round, what is the sense that you're potentially getting that this could be a legitimate thing with Aaron Rodgers deciding to leave? Well, it's legitimate. Uh, you know what? I, I, could, I could end it there. I could end it there. Because what's funny is that had people thinking that literally they're trading Aaron Rodgers the day of the draft. And it's funny because Aaron Rodgers signed a three-year, $150 million deal after that. Yeah. So much for that. So understand we are being played. Nobody really knows what's going on. Now, here's my thing, though. Okay. A couple of things. I want to just kind of deal with a couple of things here. You know, I am Joe the fan, you know, who started out in his mama's basement and everything, so to speak. I didn't go to journalism school or ESPN school of broadcasting or anything. I am just a guy who, who likes to fix things. Okay. But I'm sitting here in my mind because we've heard in the last couple of days, um, Drafting Michael Penix. We've heard um, trading for Derek Carr. Today we're hearing Trey Lance. Now, I'm trying to understand how, when we look at Dak Prescott and we say that this year is $55 million. I get it. It's, it be, it's ballooned up. But here's the thing that's kind of funny, that we're blaming Dak Prescott for the Cowboys inability to take care of contracts and waiting till the last minute. Jerry Jones' whole mantra is deadlines get deals done. Just so they get done does not mean that they get done well. Because as I look at this, I want you to look at some things here, okay? Just look at some numbers here. How do you look and say Dak Prescott, who was number one in TDs last year, right? In yards, was third most in yardage. In completion percentage, second highest, okay? Interceptions, all the way down at 16, right? So let's take, for example, Derek Carr. Derek Carr with the New Orleans Saints. Derek Carr, who's never won a playoff game. Derek Carr, who's never been an all-pro or a pro bowler. We are sitting here hearing... The Cowboys should trade for it. Let that go. Trade for Derek Carr. Now, mind you, this is the numbers from last year. Dak Prescott, 12 and 5. Derek Carr, 9 and 8. Completion percentage, Dak's a little over one higher. 69.5. Not bad. 68.4 for Derek Carr. Passing yards. Dak Prescott, 4,516 yards to 38.78. Yards per pass. Over half a yard less for Derek Carr. Yards per game, 40-some more for Dak Prescott. TD passes, 11 more. Interceptions, Derek Carr did have one less. Quarterback rating, 105 to 97. 
Do you believe that if we had Derek Carr, that we are a better team? How about Justin Herbert? Because I keep hearing that Justin Herbert is elite. He is a guy who can overcome. He's a great talent. Well, here's the numbers. Now, get I get it. He was injured part of the year last year. But, you know, your ability to be on the field is part of the equation. And we had the same offensive coordinator with Dak that Justin Herbert did. Justin Herbert played 12 games, 5-8. and eight. Dak Prescott, 12 and 5. Completion percentage, hmm, 69.5 to 65.1. Passing yards, Dak Prescott has 1,400 yards more. Yards per pass, Dak Prescott has almost a yard more. TDs, Dak Prescott has 24 yards more. Rating, Dak Prescott is 12 more. So as I'm looking at this, I don't see how a guy who's getting $52 million a year, how we squawk and say Dak's not worth it. Justin Herbert has never won a playoff game. Justin Herbert, what has he done? Jalen Hurts last year. Jalen Hurts, one less victory. They they had number one seed sewn up, and then they lost six of seven. But look at the passing numbers here. 69 to 65 passing percentage. And you can't say that they don't have some weapons on that offense and a great offensive line. We had no running game, and our offensive line is still in flux. Yet Dak Prescott has got almost 700 yards more passing. Another half yard more Yard average per pass. Averages 40 more yards per game and 36 TD passes to 23. And look at the interceptions, bro. Nine for Dak, 15 for him. Look at the rating, 105.9 versus 89. So as I look at these numbers and things, and I see that Dak Prescott is literally with lesser talent than some of these teams, is doing a lot more. And I don't know how, if you're going to get a quarterback whose numbers are nowhere near what Dak Prescott has, how you're actually going to be better. And to be clear here, the last time Aaron Rodgers won the MVP, he had 36 TDs and four interceptions. So the chances of getting somebody who is that good, and mind you, they didn't win a playoff game that year. Remind you, they were the number one seed <clears throat> and didn't win a playoff game. So <clears throat> it's interesting to me how people think we're better off if we just get rid of that guy. Now, of course, today, the brand new flavor in your ear is back. It's an oldie but goodie from Woody about how the Cowboys should be playing Trey Lance. Let's go to the tape. It's time for another edition of Would You Believe? Damien, would you believe that the Houston Texans are the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC? I would not believe. I Listen, I love the moves that the Houston Texans have made on both sides of the ball, but they are also playing a first-place schedule this year. And you know who's on who they have? At Cowboys, at Packers, at Chiefs, at Jets, Ravens, Bills, Dolphins, Lions. Mm -hmm. That is a hell of a schedule for the, for the Houston Texans. They could be better but take a step back as far as their record this year. Interesting. All right, how about this one? Would you believe that the Packers are the biggest threat to the 49ers in the NFC? Hmm. I would not believe that. Listen, the Packers are going to be a trendy pick for a lot of reasons. They got a really good quarterback, a lot of really good young players. But I'm still a believer in what Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions are doing. Um, I, I like the moves that they made. They added on the defensive side of the football. Um, their mentality, I think it's going to be a dog fight, but I, I, I like really like the Detroit Lions. All right, I'm over for 2. Here's one more. Damian, would you believe that this is Dak Prescott's last season with the Cowboys? You know, I would believe this. Right here. I, I would. Listen, the, 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 the Dallas Cowboys are basically saying, here we like, go. pulling a Joe Flacco type scenario here with, with, with Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. Bet on yourself. Go out here and basically repeat what you did last year. What was a MVP type season for Dak Prescott? 
if they they you would have thought that the Dallas Cowboys and and Dak would have came to a contract extension mm -hmm. before free you would have thought that. Start. that hasn't happened yet. So I, we're in wait and see mode with this whole scenario. I'll tell you who else thinks this is a situation to watch is Adam Schefter. Uh, earlier this week on NFL we Live, uh, he was talking about the Cowboys situation, the fact that Dak is not signed yet, and uh, here's what he had to say. What are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak? That's interesting, and that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys might just be a I sleeper think. team in the quarterback market during mm -hmm. the draft, because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you think because Dak is going into the last year of the contract and it might be time to get somebody in there to start grooming him. Just like they found Dak Prescott in round four, might be time to go find another quarterback in another round to begin to get him ready. You're nodding your head. Wow. You like this idea? I think it's, it's absolutely plausible. Like if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you have to protect yourself. We, you know that Dak Prescott cannot be franchised. If Dak, it takes two sides to go ahead and come yeah. together for a contract. If Dak Prescott says, look, I want to test free agency, there's nothing the Dallas Cowboys can do to stop Dak Prescott from testing free agency. So, listen, I think the Dallas Cowboys is a situation where it may not be the first round because I think they got some other needs, but I could see them, you know, second, third round pick. Maybe they go out and draft a quarterback because who else do they have? They got who else do they have? They traded a fourth round. They got Trey Lance. They got Trey Lance, uh -huh. who they traded a fourth round pick yeah. for. But other than that, who do the Dallas Cowboys have? But Cooper here's Rush. The interesting thing, Bishop Woody. The Cowboys are in this situation because of the Cowboys. Because they have allowed Dak there to you get go. to this point yeah. where he has all the leverage. And so uh, if Schefter's saying it, clearly we're listening, right? But I think if, if the Cowboys know, if, they, if the Cowboys don't think that Dak is the guy, then yes, draft a quarterback. If the Cowboys think Dak at this point is going to say, Oh yeah, I want to hit that open market. I want to see. I want to see what my value is to other teams. Then yes, but the Cowboys put themselves in this situation, which is why I think a lot of us are scratching our heads. Like we didn't expect that we would still be talking about Dak not having this extension wrapped up already. So that tells me it tells that something's me. not right, and the, so the belief in Dak is, might just be the issue. Harry, you got to help me out, oh, don't right? Don't worry, I'm about to help you. Bro. I mean, like, there's no way the Cowboys <laughs> are drafting a quarterback this year, right? In the first three rounds? Too many team needs. You need, you lost two offensive linemen, Tyler <laughs> Biotis, who went to the Washington Commanders, also Tyron Smith, who's now with the New York Jets. Who's playing running back, right? And I also yeah, think this offense has to have a balanced attack. It just can't be at the forefront of Dak Prescott. You have to be balanced offensively if you think you have an opportunity to contend and win a Super Bowl. Uh, I, I just... Defensive tackle, more linebackers, all these things are needs for the Dallas Cowboys. So drafting an immediate quarterback right now in the first three rounds, I don't see how that's going to make you successful if you Dallas with so many team needs and also not being active in free agency right. in the 2024 free agency tracker. Uh, I also think they already got their quarterback that they're trying to draft and Trey Lance right now. Right. The man will be 24 years old next month. The, let's not forget, y'all, he was the third overall pick yeah. In a draft. Yeah. The third and, the, well, the and the San Francisco 49ers gave up on. The but, draft position doesn't. I don't think the draft position really matters because we've seen other guys get drafted high and not think? pan out. I do think, though, that to your point, Harry, Trey Lance's story, forget it's it's not finished. It hasn't even begun to be. Hasn't it hasn't even begun. Nobody's written it yet. So you do have potential there. But if you're the Cowboys, the all-in Cowboys, are you, are, are you prepared to say, you know what, we're going to hand this over to Trey Lance, sight unseen, essentially? I mean, you watch right. him in practice, but he hasn't been, hopefully. Well, you'll, be ba you'll basically be doing the same thing if you take a rookie quarterback. We're just handing it over to, the rook to a rookie guy. And by and the way. At least Trey Lance, you've had that guy in your building for two years. He had mm -hmm. opportunity to sit last year behind Dak Prescott. He's going to sit here, there. Here's, 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 my, here's, my, here's my thinking on this. Okay, if, if, if yeah. we, the Dallas Cowboys and, and Dak Prescott has allowed this thing to get to this point right here, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? And there's a, there's, a, there's a real possibility that Dak Prescott could become a free agent. Could mm -hmm. become a free agent. Mm -hmm. What if Dallas is like, listen, this is the ceiling that Dak Prescott can, it can hit. Maybe we want to hit a reset. Maybe we want to hit a, a re If we can't Me. re sign Dak Prescott, maybe we want to hit a reset, build under a rookie. Okay, hit a reset. Yeah, maybe this is the ceiling. You know, being in the top five in every positive category of a quarterback. Maybe that's the ceiling. 
Maybe it is. Maybe you're not going to get any more higher production out of Dak Prescott than 36 TDs and 9 interceptions and 4,500 yards, although he has had 37. He has had 4,902 yards before. But be that as it may, how many quarterbacks will get to that level? Apparently, last year, it was only one guy. And this is ridiculous what we have here. You know, if if the Cowboys are worried about Dak Prescott, okay, I get you that. I get you that. But it makes no sense whatsoever at all to go out and say, let's draft another quarterback when you gave up a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance and kept Cooper Rush. That Trey Lance could not move past Cooper Rush as the backup quarterback. And then to turn around and say, let's draft a guy. If you're going to draft a guy, then you shouldn't have paid the $5 million to keep Trey Lance. This is all bullshit that you're being fed. Okay? And I'm going to call out bullshit when I get it. And you heard Adam Schefter literally trying to connect the dots and say, here's what it is when there is no... They're there. We do know the Cowboys... Let people go into free agency and look around before they re-sign them. That's their thing. It's not that this is the first time they've let Dak Prescott's contract go to the wire. They did the same thing to Jason Garrett, the anointed son. He played out the last year of his contract, and then they signed him to another one. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do business. It's just the way the Joneses do business. They don't have a clue, but they like being talked about Every single day that literally we go from one side of the fence to the other. We them boys. We them boys for all the bullshit. Have a great day and I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.